All right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to episode number 10 of Niagara Performs. Uh, we are celebrating all of the arts in our community. Uh, the arts still live here, whether it be music, dance, theater, artists are still creating. And uh, tonight we have an art form that may be the least conducive to not having a live audience, and that is stand-up comedy. So without further ado, we're going to get right into some laughs, and I'm going to introduce you uh, to the festival director of the Garden City Comedy Festival. Please welcome David Green. David, how are you? Hey, buddy. I'm great. How are you? All right. I'm doing well. Thanks so much for uh, joining us today and being part of this. Uh, you're such an active member in our arts community. It's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, some people may or may not know you from uh, other things outside of the Garden City Comedy Festival that you've you performed there, of course, at the uh, First Ontario Performing Arts Centre and venues all across Niagara with that uh, festival. You were also at our place uh, when you won a St. Catharines Arts Award. You also opened up for James Mullinger in Partridge Hall as part of our Hot Ticket series. Uh, you're the host of Live on Queen with David Green radio show. You're the host of the Showcase Niagara series that was raising money for United Way. Um, and you also host, oh, Hilarity in the Horseshoe on Your TV Niagara on Coach Go. And I think we share uh, a mutual love and respect of Jack Custers. I heard you're giving him a shout out. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> so you're, you're a busy man and uh, you're a hustler in our community and we appreciate everything you do. So it's a pleasure to have you here. Thanks, buddy. It's an honor to be here. Yeah. And uh, I love your style of the puns and the one-liners and, uh, for lack of a better term, the dad jokes. I don't know if you get that. And I mean absolutely no disrespect because every time I hear you perform, I think my dad would have loved that joke. <laughs> that's my prim yeah. primary target there, audience. Yeah. Well, he was a pretty smart and funny dude, so that's a, that's, that's a compliment, <laughs> believe me. So um, I love what you're doing, and it's a pleasure to have you here. So I'm going to hand things over to you now. You've got a couple of special guests. But uh, I want you to do your thing. So sit Thanks, back, man. everybody, and uh, have enjoy a few laughs. And if you want to comment and interact with David or any of the comedians, just leave the comments in the comment section. Over to you. Thanks, man. Thanks, buddy. Mike Chess, everybody. Mike Chess, that guy is an awesome guy. Um, if you ever get to hang out with him, very cool dude and very smart. And look at this, putting all this together. Hello, everybody watching at home. Um, as Mike said, my name is David. I am... Honestly, all the, you're saying all those nice things about me, about the events and shows that I've done in the past, and now here I am stuck in my basement with nobody. So it's a little, it's like I want to do all those things again. But it's, I'm so honored to be asked to be a part of this Niagara Performs um, series, concert series, with all these amazing musicians. Um, and it's great that we can have a bit of comedy and some laughs. Um, albeit it's maybe a little strange tonight because... Obviously, with music, you can enjoy the music, but with laughs, it's a two-way street. We're in this together. I tell the jokes, and then you laugh with me. But we're going to do what I'm going to do. I've got two of the funniest guys I know uh, who I've done many shows with throughout Ontario, and I know they're going to make you laugh at home. We might not be able to hear you laughing, but please, comment in the comments to decide. Play it. Interact with us. We'll do a, You've heard of a jukebox, a music jukebox? This will be a comedy joke box. You want to joke about something? Type down what you want to joke about, and I'll craft you a joke right now because I got nowhere else to be, guys. I'm here with you guys. Um, I'm so proud um, to be a part of the the Faux Pack First Ontario Performing Arts Centre family, and we do our Garden City Comedy Festival shows there for the past four years. Um, we were going to have our big gala there on April 18th, but unfortunately, we'll have to postpone that for a little while. Um, but it's interesting this format of trying to because it's kind of like a you know, it's like if a tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound? If a joke gets told and there's nobody there to laugh, does it actually? But anyway, I'm not going to beat around the bush any longer. I'm a sap for tree ponds. And I've been pining to tell some all day. Some are more popular than others. Some are unbelievably bad. And to be fair, I should probably branch out into other subjects. But that wouldn't be getting to the root of the problem, would it? Do you see the point I'm trying to make, ladies and gentlemen? You better all lay the sumac down on your candy ash, is what I'm trying to say. Because I'm not afraid to take on anybody. You can probably tell by looking at me, by my tie with elephants on it, and my accent that I am a British gangster. I was raised on the street. Coronation, represent. You know what's up, boys and girls. 
Shout out to my CBC. I am, I am from England originally, but I'm proud to call Niagara my home for the past 13 years. I've been living here. And but now my accent is weird. I'm like a mix of English and a mix of Canadian. But you know I'm really English. You can tell because crest white strips don't fit me. That's the that's the giveaway, you know. <laughs> I have to send back home to England for the special British zigzag version from my grandmother. Comes with a geometry set and a pair of scissors, right? And people make fun of my teeth all the time. I don't mind. I use Sensodyne, so it doesn't bother me. You know, it's not going to lie. It's a little strange telling jokes, not only because there's no audience, but sometimes as well, because I do the dad jokes and puns and one-liners, sometimes when I perform, I'll have a guy in a drum set behind me. And, yeah, he, he won't do the rim shots. He'll just lean forward every few minutes and go, get another job. He's very rude. I don't, I don't know why I still keep him around with me. But, you know, I, I love what I do, though. I love that I get to do perform at fundraisers and events and beautiful theaters and tell jokes and make people laugh. Do I know any English jokes, says Gemma Bishop? Um, I, I, some English jokes. I, I find I get myself in trouble when I do too much English humor. Because I, I don't know if it's because my accent makes me seem smug because I'm English. I had a girl once break up with me. She said that all people from Britain are arrogant. I was like, I think you'll find it's called Great Britain. Get it right. This what <laughs> that did not go down well. That did not go down well. Um, but I've got a beautiful wife now. I have a pregnant wife, so I'm practicing for the dad jokes to because I got a baby coming in less than two months. And it's gonna be interesting what our child sounds like, if I'm being honest, because my wife is Italian, I am British. And then we're going to have a baby who's going to be Britaliano. <laughs> hey, what's the matter for you? Like, nobody's going to want to listen to that. That's a poor child already. Poor child. Oh. You think this is weird, though, now? My wife is a teacher, and next week I have to perform for her junior kindergarten students. Just kidding. <laughs> JK, you know, that's what I'm trying to say. But um, I'm... Very happy to have been with my wife for the past couple of years. Uh, we've been together. And because growing up, I don't know if you can probably tell, I wasn't always the cool guy. Like in high school and college, I never had any girlfriends. It was, I was like, I, I had one girlfriend, one girlfriend, and she broke up with me because she said, true story, she said I was too polite. That's what it was. She didn't, no, not was she said she didn't like how I opened doors for her. And not like metaphorical doors, like physically, she didn't like how I was opening doors and I was too nice. And that was the issue. It was kind of like, you know, when you go to an apartment building and you're trying to move stuff into the building and there's the door that opens up and there's always that brick on the floor where you can prop the door open so it stays open and doesn't lock. And everybody loves that brick. It's a nice, it's a helpful brick and it's there and it's handy and it helps you get move things in and everybody loves it, except... It's all alone, and it's by itself. And meanwhile, all the other bricks are off getting laid, but not me. I was that brick, but it's okay, because it led me to where I am now, and I get to be part of this awesome Niagara Performs comedy series. And there's nothing else I would love better to do um, than tell jokes. And admittedly, there's not that much money in comedy sometimes. Um, it's not so bad for me, because my parents are loaded. Yeah, they are far too drunk to be disappointed in me, so... <laughs> You won't worry about it. So I do have to have, I have to get other jobs to supplement my income. Income. So I, if you ever go to Niagara on the Lake and you go down at nighttime and you see the ghost walks walking around the town, that's me. I'm one of them. I'm Sir Bob the Ghost Guide. I have a big top hat. I have a cape, a lantern, and a big stick. And I walk around the town telling ghost stories and terrible jokes. <laughs> But never get drunk and play with a Ouija board. It's not good to mix spirits. Ha, ha, ha. Hold on. I guess worse. Have a couple of beers. That's a happy medium. <laughs> Even the ghosts are like, boo. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. Cindy's crying. I don't know if she's crying with laughter or she's crying at too many puns. But it's okay, Cindy. I appreciate it. And Victor J. Hansen as well says, yes. Thank you, Victor. Oh, what a guy. I love Victor. We did a fundraiser at the Greg Fruin Theatre not too long ago. A class act is Victor Hansen. If you ever need to hire somebody for an event. 
Um, I did get out. I've, I've been stuck in my basement for a long time. I did get out yesterday. I went for a bit of a stroll to Niagara on the lake. I had to go pick up a newspaper. I want to give a shout out to Mike Balsam, um, who wrote a nice article in the paper for us. So I went and picked up one of those. And I went for a walk around the town a little bit. And as I was walking, a black cat walked in front of me. And I couldn't remember if that was good luck or bad luck. So just to be safe, I picked it up and I threw it over my left shoulder. So I'm hoping. <laughs> I don't have any cats. Um, I used to have two. Um, they got hit by a truck. But don't be sad. They're cats. They had nine lives. The trouble was it was an 18-wheeler. That was the issue. Um, just kidding, everybody. There's no, no, no cats were harmed in that joke. Don't get off. I told that joke one time at Marte Cafe. And one guy got very upset with me. And he was very, he said, yeah, you ruined the vibe. And he was pretty annoying. So, so I picked him up and I threw him over my left shoulder is what I did. <laughs> and, but. The cool thing about this, though, is that we get to tell jokes and we get to hang out and be funny people. And not only that, I get to tell jokes and not even have to wear pants. How amazing is that? That's the best part about the whole thing, boys and girls. I love it. This is fantastic. You know, I've been trying to, admittedly, I've been slacking a little bit. Um, I've been not eating as well as I should. I had a bit of a health scare as well not too long ago. I found a lump in my throat, and I was all worried because I thought I had a tumor. Turns out I just swallowed a bingo ball. So, yeah. thankfully, B9, we're okay. So, don't worry. I did have a good day today, though. I finally found the channel changer for my television. Yeah, it was hiding in a remote location. It was down the back of my couch. That's where it was. You know, you know, down down in the crevices of the sofa where there's all the garbage and there's Kit Kat wrappers and Twix wrappers and Mr. Big wrappers and Snoop Dogg was down there. Just kidding about Snoop, although I did find 50 cents and an M&M. What, what? <laughs> Ludicrous. Am I right? <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, everybody. Kit Kat, Twix and Mr. Big are my favorite chocolate bars in the whole world. My favorite chocolate bars out of this world, Mars, Galaxy, and Milky Way. Yeah, that's a silly joke, but hopefully gets a few Snickers. I'm on a Rolo. <laughs> hey, Annie Wilson. Shout out to Annie Wilson. Oh, Victor J. Hansen says, this is fantastic. We are laughing. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven emojis. That is a record. I've never had eleven emojis my way. Thank you, Victor J. Hansen. You've made my day because right now I feel very strange and weird yelling at my computer screen. All I feel like is I'm yelling at the screen and it just, it sounds weird because nobody's laughing, but it just also looks how much I need a haircut. That's all it's reminded me. I'm yelling at my screen in my basement and I see, I look like I'm Yeremia Yager from early 80s. Like what the hell is going on here? But it's okay. It's okay, boys and girls. I am going to get in shape. I am going to take advantage of this time at home. I can't go to the gym. So what I did earlier today, I'm trying to get back into the routine. I just, I've been lifting up heavy objects I find around my house. Like today I was doing curls with a Webster's Dictionary. <laughs> Adds definition. Can't say. Then I do squats to get the sore ass. Somebody tried to steal my dictionary. I was at a loss for words. But I always keep my thesaurus with me because it comes in handy. Useful, helpful, beneficial, advantageous. Uh, you know, because I don't know why somebody would steal. Like, I don't I, I don't think I like to obey the law. I never do bad things. The worst thing I did was a few years ago, I wrote my name in wet cement and they found out it was me because I was stupid because I put my first name and my last name. Now they've got my name. They've got my fingerprints. It's pretty concrete evidence is what I'm trying to say. Concrete. <laughs> That's actually better telling that joke just to a computer screen because I told that joke a few months ago live and an angry Italian guy started yelling at me. He's like, concrete and cement are not the same. Ah. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, sir. I don't have time to argue about semantics with you. I've limited time here. Oh. Another time I got in trouble, I went into the bank and I pretended to rob the bank with a hot glue gun. I was like, hey, there's the stick up. Watch out, I'm packing heat. Don't try anything crafty. <laughs> uh, that's what happened. I don't adhere to the rules is what I'm trying to say. 
They weren't impressed. They were still annoyed about the last time I went to the bank and I went to the cashier. I said, hi, can I take out some money? She said, withdrawal. I said, hi, can I take out some money? Is what I said to her, <laughs> Yeah, the reaction of lack of laughing that I'm hearing now is much like it was in a bank when I did that as well. Oh, my word. But that's okay, guys. That's okay. Because we do have a fantastic lineup of performers um, for you tonight. We have, um, coming up very soon, I'll introduce him, the very funny Michael Moses, who was actually, he was scheduled to perform in the recital hall for the Performing Arts Centre Gala of the Garden City Comedy Festival on April 18th. Unfortunately, we'll reschedule to another time. But he's absolutely hilarious. He's performed all across the country. Um, he was in the Halifax Comedy Festival. Um, we also have the very funny Thomas Kalman, who is a very good friend of mine, absolutely hilarious. We've done many shows together. Uh, a couple of years ago, he was nicknamed the winner of the Windsor's Next Top Comic competition and played huge th sold out theaters. Absolutely hilarious, dude. Um, we were going to have Fiona O'Brien perform for you as well, who's also was scheduled to perform at our gala. But we didn't realize that Jack Custers, the man himself, Mr. Jack Custers, who we all love at Kojiko, I didn't realize that this was going to be broadcast on Kojiko as well. And she's scheduled to perform this summer for the Halifax Comedy Festival. And there's a clause in the contract where you can't perform the material on TV before. So she unfortunately, she had to drop out because she's too big time for us. But you can see her again in live in future. Uh, I can't wait to get back to live shows with you all. But right now, we're going to bring you the next best thing. We're going to bring you some of the funniest comics working to perform as part of this Negra Performs concert series. And our first performer I'd like to... Welcome. He's a very funny man, originally from Alberta. Then he moved to Hamilton, started making waves and kicking ass, performing all around, winning competitions. Just did the Halifax Comedy Festival, one of the funniest guys I know. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the very funny Michael Moses. Hey, thank you, David. Big round of applause for David if you're out. Let me hear you all the way down the street. Uh, <laughs> thank you, David. I appreciate it, man. Uh, are you staying here the whole time? No, no, no I'm going to leave you do your thing. Okay. <laughs> no, oh, you didn't have to go that fast. Uh, uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate uh, being here. I'm going to tell some jokes. I don't know if they're my own jokes or jokes I just uh, got out of this book right now and memorized. Uh, but uh, like David said, I am from Alberta uh, originally. I grew up in a small town there. I had 3,000 people, and three of those people were black people. Me, my brother, my sister. That was it. That was it. That's all we had, uh, which I didn't mind at all. I didn't mind because uh, growing up, uh, me and my brother and sister, only black people, but growing up when white girls want to start dating black guys, there I was. All right. Same black shirt and everything. You know, same hat turned backwards. Because uh, it's like, like if you're a white girl and you're going to be a black guy home for the first time, you don't want to start off by bringing home DMX. Like, that's just way too much for dad, right? Your dad doesn't even know who he is, but he starts barking at your father. The family dog just died. It's a little too soon. Uh, so you start with Michael Moses and you work your way to the top, okay? Like, because I'm black, but I'm not that black. Like, you invite me to brunch, I'll be there. All right? On time. Before you, probably. I'll be sitting there like, hey, here's your mimosa. Why are you late, Greg? But uh, like, I think there's a levels to it. Like, you start with me, you work right at the top. I think it goes Drake, me, yeah. Drake, me, you know, Justin Trudeau, DMX, okay? Those are, that's a natural progression of Black people, I think. Black guys, you want to date. Uh, it was nice growing up, Alberta. I enjoyed, oh, should, wait, I should wait for the laughter on that one. Let you guys calm down from the laughter of that joke. Okay. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed growing up in Alberta. Uh, my dad got there, uh, like to Alberta when he was like 22, straight from Africa, and he met my mom. But he had two girls in Africa before he got to Canada, which was really cool because I got sisters in Africa. I got to talk to on the phone all the time, and uh, they don't speak English, but still got to talk to them. It was cool, and so I would always brag about it with my friends and. Uh, at one time, I was at a friend's place, Kevin's place. Uh, Kevin's mom, she made casserole. And she's like, hey, Michael, you want to stay for this casserole? And I'm like, sure. And I shouldn't have. It sucked. It was horrible casserole. I was eating it so slow. I was trying to be polite. I was going to like try to, I was trying to finish it. 
But it was Ina Sosa at one point. She looked at me, and the first time I ever heard it, but she goes, Michael, you should really eat all your food. There's kids in Africa that don't have any. And I was like, wow. But I know those kids, you know, and uh, they would hate this casserole too. You know, that is not good. I, if I shipped this over, they'd be like, it's okay. Uh, don't send us any more that casserole. But so it's good. I uh, live here in Ontario now, which is nice. I live with uh, uh, the girlfriend. Uh, it's going well. Uh, living in uh, her house. That's nice, right? Like she came into a relationship with the house. Yeah. First date, she was like, hey, I own a house. And I was like, yo, where's that house? Okay. Uh, and I got to the house and it's cool. And it wasn't finished at first. We're still doing a lot of renovations on it. Uh, but it wasn't finished at all. Uh, you know, so I helped to do like drywall on the house, which was cool. Uh, we made a shower, tied the shower. We did electrical, but you're not supposed to do that by yourself. Uh, don't tell anybody. Uh, we did the like uh, metal roof we're doing right now. It's uh, it's cool. And so I'm learning all these things like, uh, you know, getting into it. And like I was like three months into dating, I came over and I was like, cool. What are you going to teach me next? What are you going to teach me next? This is awesome. And then she just handed me a key to the front door three months into dating. And I was like, wow, this is way too soon. But I was like, what kind of Hansel and Gretel witch are you? You know, like just a little trail. Like, I was like, wow, I didn't know. But it, but it worked, you know, because now I live in Thorold and it sucks. OK, uh, but I live here now. She got me because uh, I feel like I built the house, you know, like if it burns down, I'm like, yeah, that's because I skipped a step, you know. Uh, but it's nice. Uh, I like having the house. It's good. Uh, I think she tries to trick me into stuff. Like, she filled me with pride, you know. That's how she, like, tricked me into moving in. Oh, I feel pride in this house. I'm like, yo, this drywall right here, I put that up, you know. I, uh, so I feel pride. I think that's how she tries to trick me into everything. Because the other day she came up to me and she was like, uh, hey, Michael, you hear about this Colin Kaepernick guy? And I'm like, uh, why are you talking about something like that during this COVID-19? There's more important things. Uh, but she's like, yeah, but, you know, Colin Kaepernick, you know, took a knee to, in the NFL and now he's not playing anymore, you know. And I was like, yeah. And then she went, Psst. sometimes it's nice to get on one knee for something you believe in, Michael. And I was like, wow. I was like, yeah, he did take a knee. Uh, for something that he believed in, but it ruined his life. Okay. Uh, so I'm not ready for marriage at all, uh, at all, but uh, we are going, to, uh, we're planning to go some weddings uh, this year. I don't know if they got uh, canceled at all, but uh, we're going to a wedding uh, supposedly that uh, it's her university friends. And she told me that her ex is also going to be in the wedding party. She was in the wedding party, ex from university going to be in the wedding party. So she's going to be like, hey, we're going to be spending some time together. Don't be weird about it. And I was like, OK, I'm not going to be weird about it because I'm going to bring my ex to this wedding, too. OK, I'm not showing up by myself. That's silly. But I'm excited to get back out and like go to the, some weddings. Uh, I enjoy weddings. One thing I don't enjoy about weddings, though, is that it's called the greatest day of some people's lives which i feel like i won't i don't want to schedule the greatest day of my life you know like just to know that it was on this day and then every day every year passes and i go man that was the greatest day of my life and in a few years i'm just sitting in my wife's wedding dress watching the video going my the greatest day of my life back there we picked a good day for it to happen you know I don't, and I think it's weird, like, the pe think about the people you might, I don't know if you're married or not, but I'm not married, but, like, the people that were at your wedding, do you really want some of those people to be at the greatest day of your life? Like, I don't know if I want my wife's dad's cousin from the Netherlands to, you know, be at the greatest day of my life. Like, it's the greatest day of my life, you know? I don't even know if my wife is going to be there. I don't know. Uh but it's uh, good. But right now we're uh, not married. I'm enjoying it. We got uh, still figuring out this house, which is good. We got mice in this house. I don't. Uh, we we have three mice, uh, not pet mice. I can't show them the pet. They're they're uh, wild field mice that run in 
three mice, and we try to kill them. I think one just went right there, hearing me talking about them. But three mice, and like we try to kill them at first, but uh, they don't die, these mice. Like we put out the traps for them, and they just went on the traps. Like they just lay on the traps, like we set out a lazy boy chair for them, and they just they just relax on the on the, on it. And one time we even walked into the house, okay? Uh, we walked into the house and we saw a mouse's arm in a trap, but just its arm. And then there was like a little pool of blood, like a tiny pool of blood and no body. And I was like, and my girlfriend screamed, she's like, ah, the blood, like you never seen that before. But I was like, where's the body, okay? Cause now we got a three legged mouse out here. Like this mouse, 127 hours itself okay it james franco'd itself i'm like yo we got a i got an oscar winning mouse in the house right now with a grudge i don't know what to do i don't trust any cheese uh, so that's what i worry about and i don't want to uh kill the mice like at first we didn't want like we tried to put them in the live traps and then we uh put the mice outside but they just ran right back inside. They ran right back inside. And they told all their friends, like, yo, you got to get in this house. The peanut butter, it's crazy, okay? I ate the peanut butter. I fell asleep. I woke up outside. Greatest trip of my life. It's chunky. There's something in it. I think that's what they're telling every other mouse. So I don't know. But I didn't, like, we don't want to kill them. I don't want to kill animals. I even saw a poster, uh, uh, like, a while back. And it said that there was, like, 500 Algonquin wolves left. And I was like, that's enough wolves. That's good. That Thank you for letting me know that th there's so many wolves out there. And then I realized, no, that's apparently not enough wolves at all. And I looked it up and BC has like 8,000 wolves, but Ontario, we only got 500. I'm like, you got to put that on the poster just because it makes me want to beat BC. I'm very competitive. So it makes me want to go, all right, BC, I'm going to save a wolf just so you don't hold that record. But I don't know, like 500 wolves, especially in one park, that's gotta be enough wolves. Like I saw that, I saw that poster, I was walking down and I was like, I saw, oh, there's only 500 Algonquin wolves left. I looked at the next dude, I was like, man, good thing we can't go some camping this summer because there's 500 wolves in Algonquin Park right now, okay? I might thank COVID for not making me, I don't know, I don't wanna die by COVID, I don't wanna die by a wolf. Uh, so I'm like, all right. But I was like, man, 500 wolves in one park, that's got to be enough. Like, are they endangered or are we in danger? I don't know. But I'm not dealing with no wolves. And that is my time. Thank you guys so much for having me. I'm going to pass this back to David Green, and I'm going to enjoy the rest of the show with you guys. Thank you so much. Have a good time. Thank you, David. Thanks so much, buddy. That was hilarious. <laughs> well, you couldn't hear me. Believe me, I was laughing very, very, very loud. Okay. Uh, I didn't see you on stage, man. All right, yeah, same, 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 same. Watch out for them mice, buddy. Yeah, I will do. <laughs> that was Michael Moses. Everyone, make sure check him out on the stage. Once we're all allowed, and it's safe to do so, because in person, in live, he honestly is one of the funniest people I've seen him destroy audiences. Uh, one of the best. Um, and this is Mike's wife. If you watch, it, if you need any help with your renovations as well. Check out Raven's Head Homes, who are uh, sponsor of the Garden City Comedy Festival. It's such, such my brother's company does great work all around. Because I, I don't know anything how to fix construction, anything. I am useless. I don't know how to do, do anything. I have a screwdriver. That is about it. And it's not even mine. It's Phillips, you know. And he wants it back, but it's locked in my toolbox. And Alan has the keys. So, you know, that's my tool, Joe. Nailed it. Thank you. Not gonna lie, these jokes are funnier when you're hammered. So drink up, guys. I hope you're having fun <laughs> wherever you are listening. Uh, we are here. We're having fun here. That was Michael Moses. In honestly, I can't wait to get back to, when everybody's when we and together and laughter and have a good time because it's so important to not just us but the whole community. Um, because I, I I do a lot of fundraisers. I had a fundraiser about four months ago. It was in a Royal Canadian Legion, and it was a, for the cadets. I, I can't remember exactly who it was for. But it was just weird when you're telling jokes. All of a great crowd. But I just felt a bit weird because there was a giant picture of the queen on the wall behind me. Because I, it was like, I felt, I mean, I don't, I'm usually a fully clean comedian, but sometimes, you know, I don't want to, I don't, I don't, I feel, I don't want to watch what I say in front of Her, her Majesty. 
Because I don't know if you've been to a Royal Canadian Legion, but they are obsessed with the Queen when you go to these places. Like at this one, there were pictures of her all over the walls, on the doors. There was even a picture of Prince Charles on the wall door to the men's washroom, which I thought was kind of funny. I guess he really is next in line to the throne. I think that's why. I don't know. I just made sure I gave it a royal flush. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying, guys. Oh, my word. But I've been staying at home, not going out. I've been trying to embrace this technology, like doing these shows. I've been doing Zoom shows every Friday night that we've been running, uh, which is fun because you're going to hear the audience laughter, which is pretty cool in the room. But then, like, my I'm trying to figure out my computer. You know, yesterday, I spilled milk all over my computer. I didn't cry over it. I was just annoyed because I just deleted my cookies. Damn it. You know? And then I've got my phone, my phone technology. i got issues with that because I don't know what it is. My phone service keeps cutting out all the time. And I don't know why because my bills all say that I'm outstanding. So I think I'm going to switch. I think I'm going to switch to Virgin because I know they won't screw me. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Come on, guys. Give me kudos for that one. <laughs> I told that joke one time in a crowd. Some got wise guy at the back of the crowd shouted, tell us another one. He got more laughs than I did. Son of a gun. I was like, don't worry, sir. There'll be more phone jokes on the Verizon. Don't you worry. And there's going to be more phone jokes four photo jokes on the Verizon right now with our next performer, one of my favorites. We've been doing a bunch of shows with him online on the Friday night Zoom shows that we've been doing with the Garden City Comedy Festival. Um, and he's definitely a crowd favorite. Um, absolutely killed it. People always ask to have him back. Um, he's headlined a bunch of shows down here in the region at Showtime Comedy and the Exchange in Niagara on the Lake. And it's my pleasure to introduce to him right now the very funny Thomas Kalman, everybody. Hey, buddy. David, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good to see you, sir. I hate to say it, but this video is on all choppy. I hope you can, uh, you can hear me just fine, eh? I'll go by the expression on your face. <laughs> Hope I'm not frozen. I'm just, uh, you look good, buddy. You look good. Can you hear me okay? Oh, thanks. Dude, <laughs> I can't hear you. I'm not all happy on me, but if uh, if you can hear me, I'm good to go. I I'll just can't hear you when you're saying so be back. And... Ah, here I am. Okay, I hope you all can hear me. Because honest to God, it's gone all choppy on me for some reason. Ever since uh, it switched Michael Moses back to uh, David. Anyway, if it's coming through choppy for you, you know, leave a comment there. And I happen to know that David has at least another hour and a half of puns he could tell. So, uh, you're you're definitely in good hands with very much, David. Guys, I'm in isolation. I know we're all in isolation, but a bit of a difference. I'm in isolation uh, with my mother, which... Uh, not as fun as it sounds, you know. I'm uh, I'm playing a lot of Scrabble, and I'm watching a lot of a show called Murder She Wrote, and uh, and actually right now I'm missing both Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy to do this. So uh, that kind of sucks because I've kind of gotten the rhythm of watching every night. Uh, my mother, very nice though. She's a, a very religious woman, you know. She she actually she used to be a nun, which I'm not making up. Uh, she used to be a nun. She wasn't a fantastic nun, you know. She she had five children, which is uh, which makes her a good Catholic, you know. But uh, ironically, it also makes her a, a horrible nun. I'm also I'm uh, uh, actually my brother is uh, uh, my brother is gay. So when he came out of the closet, I was rather impressed with how well my mother handled it. I'm not sure I get that saying actually in the closet, you know. When you're talking about somebody who's trying to hide their sexuality. I mean, a friend tried to explain it to me. He said, oh, it's just like when you were a kid, you know, playing hide and seek. You know, the closet was popular hiding spot. Sure it was. It was also like the worst hiding spot, right? That was the first place you looked was the closet. Just, let's see if anybody was stupid enough to have, it. have the same dumb kid, too. I'm just saying if you honestly want to hide your sexuality, right, pick a better hiding spot, huh? Hey, you hear about Brian? Yeah. Came out of the dry last week. I had no idea Brian was gay. Well, he had a hell of a hiding spot, you know. Not, not your fault. He's just, uh, he's really good at this game. Ah, uh, I'm, uh, I'm learning how to cook. I think women like who can cook 
right? My basis just on one thing really is the, a couple of years ago, I was kind of down on myself. So I asked a woman I worked with, I said, hey, how would you, uh, you know, rate me on a scale of uh, one to 10? You shouldn't do this, by the way. But I said, uh, how would you rate me, you know, on a scale of one to 10? She looked at me, she said, well, you know, uh, you're no Brad Pitt. Okay, not exactly what I asked her to do, you know? Pick a number from one to 10. She's naming off sexiest men in the world here. But then she followed up with this. She goes, well, you know, you're not Pitt or, uh, or Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Gordon Ramsay, the chef? Or some other better looking Gordon Ramsay I'm unaware of, you know? Gordon Ramsay, the Olympic diver, maybe. But she meant Gordon Ramsay, the chef. I'm no Gordon Ramsay. It's horrible news. I'm not saying Gordon Ramsay is an unattractive man, but she skipped a lot of people between Brad Pitt and Gordon Ramsay. I'm worried she was just trying out, you know? Like, well, you're no Brad Pitt. And then she thought, oh no, I started way too high. I know what I'll do though, I'll fix this. I'll skip all the way down to Gordon Ramsay. But if you're going to skip all those people, Skip right down to my level, get it over with, you know? Just say, hey, you're no Brad Pitt, but uh, hey, Steve Buscemi, you know? He's got nothing on you. Why are we using at Gordon Ramsay so you can rub it in that I'm no Gordon Ramsay either? So that's, that's kind of why I'm learning how to cook is because either women like a man who can cook or I'm no Gordon Ramsay, right? I'm getting pretty good at cooking too, I gotta say. I mean, you know, not to brag, but hey, on a scale of one to ten, well, I'm no Gordon Ramsay, but I could give Chef Boyardee a run for his money. That's sure. Uh, I used to work a lot of temp jobs. You're not sure what a temp worker does. Basically, if there's anybody at your work, uh, no one else like to work with. It was my job to work with that person for as long as I could stand it, you know? Sometimes they, they warn me. You know, I went in one place. They said, oh, you'll be working with today is Mike. And just so you're aware, he's really bad at small talk. I was like, well, that doesn't sound like a big deal. The guy's bad at small talk. This guy was sad at small talk. It was creepy, you know? Like, first thing he said to me, 10 minutes we're working together, he turns to me and goes, hey, Tom, Tom, hey, Tom. What are you doing for Thanksgiving, right? So where are you doing Thanksgiving? Kind of a creepy first question, somebody, right? It was June. Really creepy question in June, you know? So I said, uh, geez, uh, I don't know, Mike, probably just, you know, spending time with my family. And he goes, oh, yeah, hey, hey, Tom, Tom, hey, you got a nice family? I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're all right. You know? I'll be drunk, it'll be fine. He said, hey, hey, Tom, Tom, hey, any murders in your family? And I said, uh, no, no, there are no murders in my family. And he goes, say, I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's uh, something to be thankful for, I guess, right? And then that was the end of the conversation. We just went back, back to work. But I started thinking, I'm like, oh, it's maybe uh, something to get us here, you know? So after a while, I turned to him. I said, hey, Mike, uh, uh, geez, I don't know, man. Any murders in your family? And he said, no. Why the hell would you ask that question then, Mike? You know, what the hell's the matter with you? He goes, hey, hey, look, we could talk about sports or the weather if you want. I just thought of a more interesting question. That's when I realized Mike's the coolest in that office. Yeah, it's just misunderstood. We spent the rest of the day asking each other insane questions. It was great fun. Everybody else in that office, it was hell. Everybody else, else in that office answered the question, how's it going with the day of the week? You know, like I walked in the nerd, I'm like, hey, hey, Eric, how's it going? And they're like, well, it's Tuesday. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know it's Tuesday there, Eric, you know. Hey, Amy, how's it going? And Amy's like, well, and it's Friday, right? And then that says, hey, at least me. And then they all laugh because they're actually, they're, they're a bunch of losers, right? Then I, I go into where I work with Mike. I'm like, hey, Mike, how's it going? And Mike turns and goes, well, Got my penis caught in my zipper this morning. <laughs> like a breath of fresh air, you know what I mean? And he turned to me, what are you doing, Tom? 
And I said, well, it's Tuesday. I'll never be as cool as Mike. That's all right. <laughs> I seem to screw up every day job I get, though. In my first job, I worked at uh, Canada's one as a ride operator. I thought it was called uh, Pharaoh's, if you remember it. It's no longer there. But it was a water ride before the water park was put in. Uh, and uh, Pharaoh's, what I did is I just, two people would get on the ride a sled, and they'd get on either side on the sled. I'd press a button, and a really steep, steep drop, right? And on water at the bottom. It was an intimidating ride. I had a group of about uh, 39 year old school children from Quebec lined up to get on the rack. And the teacher went on first to show the kids nothing to be afraid of, right? And the teacher turned to me and she said, uh, Oh, could you make sure the kids are ready? They're really scared. And I said, Yeah, yeah, of course. She said, Yeah, but the kids, they, uh, they don't speak uh, English, right? So she said, how you say, are you ready in French? You say, et tu prêt? And I said, et tu prêt, et tu prêt, okay. I sent down, right? I sent the teacher down the right. Teacher left, right? That's all the French she taught me. Not enough French, you know? I got in trouble later that day. My supervisor pulled me aside, says, hey, Tom, tell me about your school children. I said, yeah, they were great. You know, I asked each and every one of them, et tu prêt? I said, that's, uh, that's how you say, are you ready in French? And she said, okay, but uh, what's the kid ready? Okay. So I don't speak French. I was just sending them down anyway, right? Because after the teacher went down the ride, two of the kids got on the ride, and I said, and then the kids said uh, something in French. And then I said, okay, have fun. And I sent them screaming down the ride. More kids got on the ride. I said, et tu prêt? Et tu prêt? And these kids, they started yelling gibberish at me. And I thought, well, they seem like they're having fun. And I sent them down the ride too. And then two more kids got on the ride. You think at some point the kids would stop getting on the goddamn ride, right? But they were only like nine years old. They were behind them in line yelling, get them on, right? So they kept getting on the ride. And then I tricked them into thinking I spoke French. And then they begged to get off the ride. And then I'd laugh and I'd send them down anyway. It's like some kind of JFL gags joke where neither side was in on the joke, you know? Once in a while, I'd throw in the rest of my French, you know? I'd tell Thomas before I sat down the ride. In my defense, if they had been yelling things like, oh, no, 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 you know, or J Sweet terrified or something, I would have clued in. But they spoke French. If you translate the whole interaction to English, two kids would get on the ride and I'd say, are you ready? Are you ready? And then the kids would say stuff in French like, oh, thank God you speak French. I don't want to go on this ride. None of us want to go on this ride. Why do you keep sending us down? Are you insane? And then I'd say, my name is Thomas. Send them down the ride. Shouldn't have told him my name. Pretty sure that's how my supervisor found out about it. But anyway, thank you so much uh, for listening to me. If you want to check out my YouTube channel, go YouTube, see, search out, uh, oh, the, my name isn't down there, Thomas Kelnan. And uh, I have stand up on there. I have some videos that me and my mom make isolation because we're bored as hell. Guys, I hope uh, I did a little to, we all did a little, bring some, uh, some enjoyment uh, to your uh, isolation. Thank you very much. Let's thanks so much, buddy. Thanks, Thomas. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. You the man. You stay safe, my friend. I can't wait to share a stage with you again. That was Thomas Callanan, everybody. Very, very funny guy. Um, if you want to see Thomas and Michael again live in person, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later, once we're all allowed back to gather again, please go like the Garden City Comedy Festival page on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, it's the Garden City Comedy Festival and see all the events that we do around the region. Um, I want to thank it as well. I want to give a thank you to the first Ontario Performing Arts Centre and all their staff and crew who invited us to be a part of this night tonight. It really was um, proud to be a part alongside some of the amazing talent for the rest of the concert series. I know Joe Lipinski is performing later this week as well, who's an absolute legend. I um, can't wait to check that out as well. 
Um, I want to give a shout out as well. Thank you to all the frontline workers, everybody who's been working during the last few weeks um, to keep everybody safe. You guys are the real heroes, and we thank you for each and every one of you for what you do and the sacrifices you're making. Um, but as well, I want to thank you as all of you at home for watching as well and spending some time with us and spending some laughs. You know, they say laughter is the best medicine, so we're here trying to do what we can to bring it to you. Um, thank you. My name is David Green from the Garden City Comedy Festival. One more time for Michael Moses and Thomas Cowan. And back to you, Mike. Thanks, buddy. Thanks very much for everything. It Thanks, was a man. pleasure. I think uh, Thomas's internet connection might have been lagging a little bit, but <laughs> hilarious nonetheless. So it was fun. Uh, to you and to Michael and to Thomas. And uh, yeah, like you said, up next is Joe Lipinski. He's uh, a Niagara legend and uh, another active uh, member of our arts community. So uh, tune in on uh, Sunday at four with that. So until next time, we'll see you soon. Thanks, David. Thanks, buddy. Take care.